Good evening and beyond the new, my fair friends, family, and subscribers. This is your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge, here to bring you part three of What If Bell Was a Spartan. <laughs> oh, and what a part this is for where we last left off. Bell was about to get recommended to do, well, his trials. Now note, this won't be the end of his Spartan training. In fact, believe it or not, most Spartans didn't end their training until they were 30. The average lifespan was around 60, believe it or not. <laughs> so yes, most of them didn't end their training until they were of 30 years of age. But we won't be going that far with Bell, don't you worry. After all, we still need to get to the Dan Machi part. <laughs> but trust me, you'll enjoy the ride nonetheless. And if not, well, I apologize. But it's a ride that, if you're willing to follow through, will be very fun. Now, let us continue with the challenges. <clears throat> Upon Bell returning home and being praised for his, f well, for his part in not only protecting the boat, but maintaining order, he is, well, given a recommendation to take his coming-of-age trials earlier than the most of the others. And the coming-of-age trials will consist of, well... Three trials. Why? Because it's real simple and easy to keep track of. Why? So. However, this causes a bit of a stir. There are very oft, there's very rarely ever a recommendation or an exception made for a soldier to, well, for a youngster to take part in the trials. Very rare indeed. <laughs> and they believe it would be favoritism if, from King Leonidas if he were to allow this. However, King Leonidas just says, Oh, really? All right. He walks over to Bell. He walks out of it, the room, goes to Bell, brings him into the council chambers, and he sets him down. So, Bell. Um, yes, Your Highness. <laughs> you know all the representatives here, I hope, by now. Yes, sir. He leads the... Mil he is one of the gen he is one of the generals of the military. They are the priests, and those are the officials who take care of other minor duties while you are away. Indeed. So they think I'm showing you favoritism for your recommendation to get in to take your trials early. So, do you think so? No, sir. You are my father second and my king first. You would never show me favoritism. If anything, you would double down on the requirements considering. Hmm. You believe so? Yes, sir. <laughs> Very well. You heard him. Whatever you put the other initiates through, you double down on him. Every burden. Every sacrifice. But sir, it, these trials, they, they could kill. There are some initiates who never come back from it. We take out the wheat from the chaff. If you truly believe he is unworthy, 
then he'll be running back home in no time. If you truly believe he is some weak-willed, weak-minded buffoon, then, well, he'll have no problem running back home. If you really think that it is only favoritism that got him this far. If you truly think that this young man is, well, just here for show and glory, and not a true son of Sparta, then he will have to break his back, proving you otherwise, won't he? What do you say, Belle? Are you up for the challenge? Belle shoots up from his chair, slams his hand deep proudly on his chest. <sniffs> sir, yes sir. Any challenge you throw at me, I will accept. Any enemy you throw at me will be slain. Any obstacle you put in my way will be beaten down, walked over, and proceeded to be conquered in the name of Sparta. <laughs> you see? Go on home. Your trials will begin in one month. Use this time to prepare wisely, Belle. Sir, yes sir. As Belle goes out. And he focuses hard on his training. He digs deeper than he's ever dug before as his father watches. Because he knows what's about to happen. And he prays to Zeus. He prays to Zeus, Ares, Hades. He prays to Poseidon. He prays to the gods and all that someone please watch over his boy. Because the amount of hell he's about to be put through is more than most men would be able to handle. And so, after a month of hard and rigorous training where Bell has gotten used to running at full speed for extended periods of time where Bell has well mastered his copache the well you see it right in there the slashing weapon of the Spartan infantry <laughs> while his father Leonidas preferred the Zephos the piercing weapon this piercing short sword, he prefers the copesh, hacking and slashing. <laughs> it's more his style. Bell is, thinks himself ready. And so the first trial begins. And what is the first trial, you may ask? is the trial of survival. The trial of survival takes place over a one month time. Each, chi each young man is given a spear, a shield, and two dogs. And they must go out to different parts of the countryside in the middle of winter and survive until 30 days have passed. They are given a two weeks supply of food. They are told to either make it last or find more. They aren't allowed to lose any of the dogs or they, d or they well, We'll have to take the trial again the next year. <laughs> Bill. He's given a crop. 
a... I don't think that's the appropriate word. A shepherd's staff. A crook. That's the appropriate word. Not a crop, a crook. A shepherd's staff. You know the one. Has the hook at the end of it. You've seen it in all the classical cartoons. If you haven't, well, I apologize. I didn't have, uh, well, I didn't download a picture of it. Because it's probably only going to be in this one part. I apologize. Now, back to the show. <clears throat> he's given a crook. No shield. And he's given two young. And I do mean young dogs. They're not exactly puppies, but they aren't trained like the others. They're still wild. They're still rambunctious. They're still overly eager. And he's only given one week's worth of food. As his father said, double the challenge. He gladly accepts it. He gladly accepts it. And he takes his dogs and he walks forth. He walks forth into the wilderness. Not to be seen again for another 30 days. <sighs> the priests all kind of lament at each other, realizing that they've just sent a young boy out to his death, all because his father's bravado, all because of his father's eagerness. The military, the general, quickly rushes over to Leonidas. Leonidas, we, are bro we were brothers in the field, and we're st I still am proud to call you this, but why did you send him out alone like that? No shield, no spear, no sword. He'll die out there. He won't. What do you mean he won't? He's a young man, younger than any initiate, and you burden him like this? What do you think's going to happen? He barely has any food. Do you really think he can survive the winter like that? He's my son, and I have faith in him. Is this because of you, your... Is this because of the stupid blessing he received? It's a miracle he survived that. No. This isn't about some prophecy, some blessing, some idiotic temple nonsense. This is about my son. And I believe he can do this. <laughs> no. I know. He can do this. There's no belief. There's no doubt in my mind. He is my boy. And I am proud to call him such. And so, the days continue as Leonidas walks and waits. Every morning, he, every morning, evening, and night, he, okay, he will wait for an hour at the steps, the entrance to his city. As he waits, he views out, wondering if Bell will come back. He comes to his house ever after that, after the night is over, when the night is still relatively young. My apologies. <clears throat> Small stutter. Just got off work. <laughs> And he, <sighs> did I do what was right? Maybe they're right. Maybe it's my bravado. As he begins to pick up his shield and spear, as his wife stops him, no, he's fine. How can you tell? He's our son. You told him to have faith. You told them to have faith. 
Now I'm telling you, believe in your boy. I'm not worried, and I'm his mother. Are you saying you're more weak-willed than I am? He turns to her and just goes, <laughs> You believe I'm weak-willed? Well, you're doddering around here like an old fool. Or, all oh, are you not? <laughs> oh, I'm going to make you pay for that. Oh, please, dear, come and try. As they go to their bedroom, and I'm not going to describe what happens there. <clears throat> Needless to say, for at least one night, Leonidas's mind is taken completely off of Belle. <laughs> at least for one night, Belle, I mean, Leonidas's mind was taken off of Belle. At least for one night. <laughs> The days continue. They turn to weeks. And the weeks double. They all begin to see the strays pile in, one after another. Some come in because they've lost the dogs. Others come in because they've lost their will. But throughout that time, none of them say they have seen Bell, as they are questioned by Leonidas. None of them question it at all. In fact, now they do wonder, where did Bell go? They saw him for a week near the, around the entrance to the forest, but after that, they couldn't keep track of him. They all scratch their heads and ponder. Where did he go? Where did he go? But they are out. The third week arrives. Leonidas is being driven mad with impatience. But he does not let it show to his advisors. But his general friend his brother in arms. He knows. He knows he worries about his boy. He knows he truly does care. And that gives him a peace of mind that you would not believe. But he also questions why does he not go out and search? Is it because of faith? Is it because of pride? Why is he still here? I can cover for him if he needs to. The three and a half week marker shows up and some of the boys are gathering together at the center. Upon being questioned by one of the guards, they ask, what are you all doing? We're going out in search for Bell. Why? And who organized this? I did, as Lander steps forward. And so did I, as Xander steps forward. What you bastards did was wrong in so many ways. Giving him a, giving him a crook. Giving him a shepherd's staff. To fend off wolves, bears. To fend for himself with two measly pups and rags. Oh, we're going to search for our brother. I care not what you say. As they attempt to step forward, as Leonidas comes down the stairs. Oh. So boys are going to search for boys. We passed our trials. And we did so without being restricted. You claim to be his father, yet you put him on a Herculean jest 
a quest of Herculean proportions, and you mock him by giving him only a stick to defend himself. Mock him? <laughs> uh, I do not mock him. I love him. For not only is he my son, he is a true son of Sparta. Now you will all go to your homes. Or I will send you there. You won't send us there. Because I'll make sure to end you, old man. As Lander gets right up to Leonidas's face. Oh, think you're strong enough to take on the king, do you? I know I am, you old bastard. Sending my friend, my shield brother, out to die in the wilderness. Just because he got a little recognition. Just because he might outshine your glory. I see what you are. You're nothing more than an overprideful bastard. And I'll make sure to end you before you can kill my brother. As Xander grabs his arm. Easy, Lander. Easy. You're going to commit treason. Lay down your weapon. He is going to get our friend killed. Treason is worth it. No. Look in his eyes. What? He isn't sending him out there for pride. You truly believe he'll accomplish his deeds, don't you? <laughs> of course. He is my son. And the future king of Sparta. He was blessed by Zeus, after all. You never know. He might come back even more rich than anyone else. If you're truly his friends, you'd at least give him the courtesy of waiting until the after the fourth week. Otherwise, you'll just be ruining his... Otherwise, you'll just be ruining his name by trying to drag him back. We never should have recommended it. As Lander shoves his sword back into his sheath and storms off. If he's dead, I'm coming for your skull next. And if he's alive, you get ten lashings for insulting your king. Deal, you old bastard. As Xander follows behind him. Lander, you crazy bastard, do you not realize what you've just done? You've insulted the king of Sparta and nearly got yourself killed. A death is preferable to letting our friends die. We are shield brothers. We hold our shields high and protect each other. That is what it means to be a Spartan, Xander. You seem to have forgotten that. As he shoves his fingers deep into his chest, you don't know. You don't know how I feel right now. We recommended it for him, and they put him on a suicide mission. Xander cocks his fist back and plunges it right into, Zan right into Lander's face as he falls to the ground. I don't know what you're going through. I'm your brother, you dumb shit. I know what you're going through. For I go through the same. I worry for him too. But... I looked into that man's eyes and I saw fear, but I also saw hope. He's right. If Bell is still alive out there, 
if he's still alive and we intervene, we embarrass him. We make a mockery of him to every Spartan in town, every boy. We at least owe him the right to see to it that if he is dead, we at least let him die with a bit of dignity. And if he's alive, we let him walk back under his own power, or we go out there and carry him back. As Lander gets up, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry, brother. It's no problem. Dad always did say we were hot-headed. <laughs> Fair point. The last day of the month arrives. The snow has ended. The initiates come back. The wolves, well, dogs, look scratched up, battered, a bit bruised, a couple of them missing a limb, maybe an eye. The initiates are mostly intact, some fresh scars, nothing worse. But they don't see Bell. At least not until, well, at the very evening when they're gathering up to head out, they hear footsteps coming up the stairs. They all turn around to see a pack of hounds, a pack of wolves, walking up the stairs along with two young dogs at the side, leading the pack. They see Belle, somewhat emaciated, down to nothing but his skin, and some rags that he made together using animal carcass. Well, animal skins, I should say. My apologies. as he carries back several pelts, several bags of scales from fish, several woven together and intertwined jars, and intertwining buckets carrying all sorts of goodies that he's collected. As he gets up to the stairs, they notice that the crook they gave him, the hook part is intact, but it's half, a, but it's half shortened, but it's been shortened by half, and the other side made into a rudimentary spear with a jagged rock at the end. They notice he's he has quite a few more scars and. Bell says, hmm, sorry to make you all worry. Took me a while to gather everything from camp and make it up here. <laughs> You'd be surprised how much it was. Oh, I was living the paradise life for a while. Leonidas looks at him with astonishment. Bell, what is all of this as he gets close and the do and the wolves begin to growl viciously as he just waves his hand as he waves his hand and does a quick <whistles> they all lower their head sorry about that they're still protective what did you what did you do how did you <laughs> uh well, let me tell you, I figured this was not only a, ma a test of survival, but as well as a test of tactics. So I took it as such. The survival was just a front, am I wrong, Father? This was also to test our commanding skill, how we would lead troops. Reason for the dogs. 
So, I did what I do best. I planned. For the first week, I fed the dogs and rationed out our food evenly. Made sure to give them plenty in order to make butt not for free. Training them. Making them obey my commands. Then, after that, we went searching for food. That's where we came across this lot. <laughs> they were taking on a deer. I just so happened to want said deer. And so, I waited. After they struck it down, I intervened and drove, and me and my friends here drove them off. It took a while, but we eventually did. I was able to break apart a chunk of rock using the staff and made a rudimentary knife to slit open the carcass, skin it, as well as make a fire using a bit of fat and some dried twigs we found in the cave. The rest of it was simple. Wolves would come in, I'd give them two choices. Join or leave. They would usually choose the third. Attack. After they got tired of being beaten over the head with my crook, they eventually learned to submit. And when they did, I welcomed them with open arms. And we in turn enjoyed more. I had to break down the crook after a while. It became a bit hard to swing with it being snapped and all. Hard to pierce skin with just with just wood. <laughs> well, Belle, you certainly are a wise one. <laughs> well, of course. I am the son of the greatest king of Sparta. <laughs> Flattery will get you nowhere, boy. True, true. But it doesn't hurt. <laughs> As Belle just wa smiles widely. As he takes in a deep breath of air and the skin type pant and well the skins on that were replacing his pants, not skin type pants, the skins that were replacing his pants well, they fall off. He is emaciated after all. Feeding an entire pack of wolves takes a lot of hunting. He was surviving out there for a while, and while there was a good bit of food, that's a lot of mouths to feed. How big is this pack? Well, simple. Twelve strong, twelve loyal, strong wolves. And two couple-month-old puppies. Well, I say couple-month-old. They're about nearly a year old. <laughs> Everyone is shocked in awe. And Lander just goes up to the old two. Leonidas and says, all right, old man, you win. What do you mean? What's going on? Your friends there were worried about you. They insisted on making a, well, hunting party to try and find you. I talked them down, but only after Lander here decided to grace me with a promise of if, I, if they found you dead, he would kill me. I in turn promised him that if we you walked back under your own power, <laughs> that he would receive ten lashings for threatening the king. Lander, you're an idiot! You moron! I was worried about you. I know you were, but... God damn it! Ivy. Xander, please tell me you're not in on this. Nope. I was about to be, but then I saw your old man's look, and, uh, well, that changed my mind. He intimidated you? More like he persuaded me. It was a genuine look, not one of rage. 
He then looks at Lander and says, Father, I'll take the lashings. What? What? It was my fault he was worried. I should be the one taking the punishment for the crime. If it wasn't for that, he wouldn't have done anything like that. As Lander then just quickly walks up to him and smacks him on the head. Not hard, but lightly. He says, you idiot. Uh, I was always too hot-headed for my own good. Maybe this will calm me down. Besides, you've been through enough. Go get some food. Just relax. A man needs to learn to take his hits. Lander. It's admirable of you to try and cover and try and protect your ally, but sometimes you must let a man know what it means to know to means to feel pain. <clears throat> what do you mean? If you keep protecting them forever, they won't be able to fend for themselves, just like the dogs. You're covered in a lot more bruises and cuts and scrapes and scars than they are. What happened? Eh, you know, other wolves, bears, these guys. Not a big deal. <laughs> I'm sure. So what are you going to do with all these? I have no idea. What? I didn't think that far ahead. You crazy? I just thought of how to survive. I thought you said your expertise was in planning. Yes. And now my plan was to come up to here and help you get your help on deciding what to do with them. Me? I don't want nothing to do with these. Well, too bad. <laughs> we we got to figure out something. What is this we? You're the one that brought them here. As Leonidas begins to kind of walk away, like, oh, no, 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 you don't. Get back here, old man. Be like, no, nope. I don't want nothing to do with this. Besides, you need to get some food and prepare for your next trial. And what's his next trial, you may ask? Simple. It's a trial of combat, but not just any combat. Pancration. And for those of you that don't know, well, allow me to, dim to tell you. Pancration is the ancient, more primal style of boxing. Not only did it involve punches and kicks, but it also involved grappling. It was a brutal and extreme sport that the Olympics soon adopted. But as soon as it was adopted, very quickly... The Spartans were all banned from participating in that event. I wonder why. After a couple of weeks of recovery and, well, Bell trying to find what to do with the wolves, he still hasn't found anything he can do with them. Except keep them. <laughs> oh, boy. The barracks got a lot more lively. Well, at least they were able to sell all the furs and scales and such. So yeah, that's nice. Berries made for a good treat. Save with the nuts. And some of the dried meat that was left. So. They. Were preparing for the next one. And this one was going to be. Well, against. Primarily, the best Pancration fighter that there was. Leonidas's right-hand man. His general. Octarius. As they dared the ring together... He told him, I'm not going to hold back on you, boy. <laughs> I don't expect you to. It'd be boring otherwise to watch an old man get knocked out. <laughs> oh, you and your father 
competing for who has the most pride? No. No, my father has more pride than me by far. But <laughs> that's at least until I become king. <laughs> Keep dreaming like that and you never will. Come on! As they clash. Octarius goes in for a heavy str for a heavy blow. Bell ducks to the left underneath and jabs him right underneath and jabs him right between the shoulder and ribs, right in that sweet spot. He recoils in pain, but is able to clench his teeth together and lifts his leg up to kick his shin, to kick Bell's shin. Bell proceeds to jump backwards, giving him a, enough breathing space to run forward and tackle him straight to the ground as he lays into him with a bl with hook after hook after hook after hook, pulling back these big, meaty fists and slamming it down into his guard. Well, I say his guard, but he's basically holding his hands up in front of him, trying to block and absorb the blows. That's whenever Bell decides enough's enough. He thrusts forward, knocking Octav Octarius off balance, slinging his head down. As he reaches forward and grabs him by the skull and slams his head into the pavement right next to his, as he rolls, mo rolls them both over and begins to, well, proceed with what Octarius was doing and slamming his fist down upon him. However, Unlike Arcturius's, whose hands are calloused over years of battle, Bells are faster, more agile. He may not have the sheer raw power that he does, but he has speed on his side, able to deal out a giant flurry of attacks, hitting him over and over and over and over, slamming it down. Arcturius has had enough. He releases his guard and slams Bell's head and slams his hand and slams his hands down right on Bell's ears. In case you don't know, that hurts like hell. <clears throat> but in doing so, he gets punched straight in the face very hard, cutting his lip. Bell is shaken by this, and Octarius takes his advantage, draws back and punches him right in the center chest, sending him off of him. He gets up and is about to stomp down on him whenever he, Bell shakes out of his stunned state and rolls over, kicks himself back up, and goes to the fight again. You're tough for an old bastard. <laughs> Tougher than you, kid, as he spits out a bit of blood. <laughs> we'll see about that. I didn't get the name the white wolf. I didn't get the name the pale horse for nothing. As he begins to run, he runs straight forward. Octarius thinks that this is going to be a head-on strike and braces himself, but instead, Bell runs straight past him. Huh? What the hell? As he quickly turns around to see Bell making the loop, he braces again, but he runs straight past him. Huh? And he does this two, three more times, each time becoming faster and faster as he runs to where Arcturius is having a hard time even keeping up with where he is and where he isn't. I wouldn't say he's making an afterimage, but, ooh, he's running pretty damn fast. And each time he runs by, he gives a light jab into the ribs, a light jab into the shoulder, a light jab into the leg. A subtle kick to the calf. He's essentially wearing down the old warrior with, a, with the equivalent of bug bites. <laughs> He's paper cutting him to death, essentially. Well, not literal death. This isn't a fight to the death. As he stands back up, I've had enough. Octarius stretches out his arms and, well, arm bars him. <laughs> Close line. Bell sees this up as an opportunity, Gra uses it, slides, grabs his arm, and, and, well, pulls himself up on it, putting him in a cross arm bar as they both fall. Boom! As he pulls down hard. <laughs> you little bastard! 
As Arcturus tries to pull, and Bell grits his teeth hard, as he pulls even harder until you hear a loud, Oh! Arcturus' arm is dislocated. He hollers and bellers in pain. As Bell lets go, swir swivels around, puts himself in a defensive stance and says, Do you yield? Octarius gets himself up, turns around, and walks towards the wall. Bell then raises his hands, figuring he is one, until he hears a loud BOOM! As he just realizes as he turns, Octarius just slammed his shoulder straight into the wall and popped his shoulder back in. It's going to take a lot more than that to bring me down, boy. <laughs> Fine. A good fight it is. As they both run at each other. Punches flying, kicks going. Until finally, Bell finds a perfect spot and uses a trick his dad taught him. <sighs> I don't know who you think I am. But I will be the next king of Sparta! As he brings his leg up. And he kicks right at the center of his chest as hard as he can. Sending him, sending Octarius flying into the wall. Boom! A thunderous thud is heard all around the arena. As he gets up and as he rolls over and gasps for air. Bell then falls to his knees and then stands proudly with his hand raised up high. They all cheer wildly. <laughs> oh yes. Octurius. It's about to be taken away whenever he stops them and walks over. I don't care what they say. You're a good fight. And a great leader you will definitely become. But the pale horse. No. You don't deserve that title anymore. You don't fight like a horse. You're cunning. You're ruthless. You're efficient. You fight like a wolf. From here on out, you're the pale wolf. The white wolf. <laughs> the white wolf. I like the sound of that. Even if you don't pass your third trial, that is what you will be known by. And anyone who says otherwise will have my boot up their ass. As he hollers that throughout the arena. <sighs> oh, as he walks away to the apothecaries. As Leonidas gets down to join him. Aren't you going to talk with your son? Octarius asks. Nah. Let him. He doesn't need me to smother him. He's a young man. Who knows? I may get a grandchild out of this. Hmm? Well, you don't know. He's got quite the following. Girls far, and girls far and wide over this city are after him. Oh, Lord. Please don't tell me we're going to have more of him. You never know. Of course, for the most part, he seems disinterested. Hmm. Is he... No, I don't believe so. He likes women fine, from what I can tell. It just... Don't know... It's like he's waiting for something. Maybe the right woman? No. It's like he's waiting until he conquers something or until he 
achieve something. Oh no. Hope he loses that mentality. Really? That mentality will wind up making a man a spinster. Making him useless, infertile. Putting everything above yourself, above your needs, is not good. And a man needs a woman. He needs someone. You can't go throughout your life without having someone care for you. Even I know that. <laughs> I... Don't let the Greeks hear you say that. Well, you know we are Greeks. Eh, technically speaking, but... You know, they're over there, we're over here. They like fornicating in the middle of the day inside giant rooms. We, we make poetry. And they wonder what, and they call us barbarians. Yes, weird. Ugh. I heard that women don't even have a say in their matters. That is very strange. As we cut back to Belle. As Belle... Oh god, that man hits like a... That man hits like a chariot. As Lander and Xander walk up and slap him on the back. <laughs> All hail the White Wolf! Future King of Sparta! As they all laugh kind of ironically, like, I don't care what you say, I will be the future king of Sparta! As they imitate the kick, be like, <laughs> Oh, I can't believe you actually said that. Uh, heat of the moment. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, as Xander pulls him close, your next trial is going to be your hardest. It's to take a trophy. A trophy? For me, it was of a bear. For Xander, it was a lion. For you, I don't know what your father will have in store for you. Because remember, double the work. Whatever it is, I'll be ready. Good, let's get you patched up. As they both kind of hobble him off to the apothecary's as Well, a bit of a fan club begins to firm. Oh yeah. Bell's got a bunch of little groupies after him. Young children trying to be like him. Hell, even a lot of women going after him. Even some of the older ones are taking a shine to him. So, and Belle just goes, oh no. Come on, Belle, live a little. I mean, hell, if I, I mean, on all of Hades' sakes, if I was to have a gr group of girls like that following me, I'd have a real fun time. Yeah. Uh, you sound like an Athenian. Hmm, maybe. Listen. It's not that I don't like women. You know I do. It's just... Yes, yes, we know, we know. Become king. Become ruler. Make a name for yourself. You do realize you have to live a little, right, Belle? You can't just keep fighting and fighting and fighting to get to the top. You're gonna burn yourself out if you keep on lighting the torch at both ends. <sighs> I know, I know, but I like doing it. Even things you like can become monotonous if you don't have a good friend from time to time. And we're not the type of friends we're talking about. As they both kind of slap him on the back. Ugh, you guys, don't worry. You rest up. We got to get him laid, most definitely. As they both kind of walk off. <laughs> a little later, his father walks in. Have you healed up well? 
Yes, sir. Relax. There's no one else around. Yes, father. Oh. Oh, he hits like a... Oh. Like a runaway chariot? Exactly. Oh, man, that hurt. <clears throat> White wolf, huh? Oh, don't remind me. So embarrassing. White wolf. Who would want to be called the white wolf? Like, seriously. Well, your hair is white, and you're a hell of a lot paler than anyone else, so... Kind of fits. <sighs> and by Zeus, why did you have to strike me with lightning? I mean... If, if, I mean, it could have been worse. You could have been tr blessed by Poseidon. You never know. You could have came away with gills. Or a cyclops. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did father those, didn't he? Oh, yeah. <sighs> I'm here to talk more about your next trial. The one about the trophy, right? Indeed. Xander and Lander have already told you? Yes. Good. Well, I picked out a few different spots, but honestly, there's a high likelihood of you dying in either one of them. Oh, indeed. Well, that's nice at least. Another chance I'll, highlight, another chance I'll die again. Yeah, what's new? This month's been full of that. <laughs> That's my boy. So, what are the tasks? And do I get to choose? Most definitely. The first one. Well, is more tricky than, well, straight up dangerous. Oh. It's to try and forge an alliance with Amazonians. Hmm? They have a small representative group from their new place. Oreo, I think it's called. However, they keep a small detachment here in order to, well, get fees for mercenary work as well as to hire out. They're very picky about who they work with. We've had alliances with them in the past, but... Mm, pride is always the killer. Why are they very prideful? Mm, more like they can't handle some of our more Spartan pride. What do you mean by... Don't get me wrong, yes, they are very... Provocative. And, yes, they will try and seduce you. I mean... Go on. But... That's not the thing. The thing is... Trying to get an actual alliance. I don't want to hire them as mercenaries. I want to form a... Solid allegiance with them. To come to their aid if needed, and to come to ours if we need it. But don't they live in that city that has some sort of magic dungeon, was it? Yes. Oh, this is so more confusing. Anything I can hit. Hmm, yes. You can go and, well, challenge the labyrinth of the Minotaur. What? Well, bring back a trophy. If you can't bring back an allegiance, you can bring back the head of the Minotaur. Hmm. I like the sound of that. Simple. Well, it sounds simple enough. It's a lot more difficult than you think, my son. Possibly, but... Sounds a lot better than dealing with, te with diplomacy. While I'm good at coming up with battle tactics, I'm not so good at being a 
diplomat. Negotiations were never my strong suit, father. True. And what's next? Next would be, well, the next one and the last one. It's take on a horde of undead in the catacombs of Athens itself. Wait, Athens has a catacomb? Yes. And a horde of undead. A person has been practicing foul magics under there. Hmm. Each one of them is irritating, to say the least. We need to purge that sickness from the land, let it sp lest it spread to Sparta. While I have no love for Athens, they do serve a necess necessary part of our greater nation. Very well, Father. All right, guys. That's going to be where I end it off. This has been your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge. And before I sign off, I'll let you guys pick which one Bell gets to go on. Will he A, go for the Amazonians, trying to get them on their side and negotiate with them? B, go for the Minotaur. C, go for the Necromancer. <laughs> Go for the necromancer and purging the undead. Your choice. <laughs> now, or D, will he try and do all of the above? Your choice. Tell me what you all think in the comments below. I'm more than willing to do it either way. But I will tell you, the next episode, if you choose, God bless. If you choose, D will be a very long and bloody one. <laughs> Ta-ta for now. This has been your humble narrator, signing off.